guest is a free ride icon born and raised on the North Shore. You've seen him in countless video segments from North Shore Extreme, New World Disorder, The Collective, Rome, and Follow Me. He's competed and judged in Joyride and Red Bull Rampage. He's a worldwide traveler and GoPro guru. Straight out of North Van, Jeff Golovich. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Ma'am, keep your top on. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I wanted to throw back to the early days of you growing up in North Vancouver, kind of when that whole free ride movement was starting, and you were a young gun, and it was all these older dudes. What was it like growing up back then? It was so sick. It was kind of, um, it had kind of more of like a Wild West feel to it. There wasn't too much structure to our sport yet, but you had all these icons that were absolutely killing it in this sport that was just so young and developing. No one had an ego. You'd meet your hero mm -hmm. and be like, yo, do you want to go biking? And they'd be like, yeah, I got nothing else to do. Let's yeah. go biking. You've been known to be quite the world traveler. How do you manage such a hectic schedule? Honestly, you just got to ride the wave and go with it. If you keep saying no, people are going to stop calling. And if you keep saying yes, you're going to find yourself in awesome situations, uh, some precarious ones, some crummy ones, but it's all part of the adventure. So what advice would you have for someone who says yes to everything, but finds that they can't manage their time as well as someone like you? Honestly, I just weigh the pros and cons of all the opportunities that come up and it's really not that hard. If you want to do something, you should do it. If, uh, if you have to do something, then obviously you have to do that as well, but things are going to stack on top of each other, and if you can find uh, that structure to be able to do it all, sure, go for it. But be aware of your schedule, figure it out. At what point in your career were you traveling the most? Um, I think I'm in the thick of it right now. The past three years, it's been eight, nine months of travel every year and I love it. I feel like you're one of the pioneers of displaying your riding through Instagram and leveraging your Instagram audience to get you places and get you sponsors. Yeah, that's not, uh, it's not an unfair remark. It's, it's pretty true, actually. Like With the new technology and things changing, you, you have to be able to adapt to it. And Instagram is a perfect example of something that's come up, social media altogether. I remember you being one of the first people to put a GoPro you know, beside the helmet, a unicorn mount, yeah. selfie. Do you, did you have a knack for it right away or did you take a lot of time to learn all these different like strategies? I was interested. I always loved cameras, shooting pictures, taking videos, but I just didn't have the time to sit down and figure out how to edit it all. And once I finally took the time just to figure out what worked for me and it came naturally after that, but there's definitely a whole build up to get to, get to where you want to be. How many DMs do you send every day? Oh God. Memes, memes fire off a uh, dime a dozen. I like funny stuff. Do you guys like funny stuff? No. <laughs> I, I, I've been known to like some funny things. I've heard. I've heard I have never things. received a meme from you though, so. That is a lie. If you pulled up yours right now, I guarantee you there's something from me in there. I got a blank DM from Jeff Gullivich, <laughs> but I haven't got a single DM. <laughs> I text you a lot of stuff though. He texts me every now and then, but yeah. you know, no memes. Yeah. No memes. Can't show that. I, I feel like we could really up our meme game in this relationship. We mentioned earlier you're a judge here at the Crankworks events, and I feel like judges get the most flack out of any <laughs> sort of event staff. What What is a challenge that you could tell the audience that you face that they might not know? One of the biggest things that people don't understand is uh, the actual scores. It's just a tool to find your finishing ranking. The score is irrelevant. Forget the numbers. It's a tool we use to place you in your ranking. Uh, a lot of people think that the first rider gets screwed no matter what. Not true. Semenuk won last year on his first run. So that just negates that immediately. And when you're <laughs> looking at runs, are yeah. you kind of scoring it like a backflip is worth nine points, a tail up is worth 15, or is it kind of, is it harder than that? It's harder than that. If you have someone doing a cash roll or a cork seven over every jump, then the score would be super high, but the, the repetition of that trick uh, should take away from the score. So in the end, we've had to figure out that we have to do an overall impression of their run and find that position. We write down the trick they did, switch, regular, um, how they landed, their amplitude, style, and that's the way we find the score for their run altogether. So, People, they need to trust us. Get that internet. Trust Gully. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, I know. I know you won't, and you can't please everybody, but that's the way the world works. And 
Something that I've always wondered is how, how do you know when something is switch? We watch practice every day. We watch all the practices the riders are doing. We talk to everybody, we have an idea of what the run's gonna be, but we don't hold them to that. But we know which way you spin, uh, we know what foot forward you are, we're watching everything, and yeah, you just gotta trust us. <laughs> so, um, do you feel do you feel pressure being a judge? And you know, of course, after every competition, doesn't matter what it is, you hear the chatter, you hear the people, the disagreement, the agreement, you hear all that. Do you does the pressure weigh on you? No, stop caring. <laughs> we we do our job. We uh, do it to the best of anyone's abilities. We stick to our word. We stick to our uh, our decisions and. Whatever said afterward is said afterward. Growing up, um, I imagine, you know, we all had a spot where we rode. Where was your spot? We had Greenwood, Lieutenant, uh, Bridge Jumps, uh, Groovula, like the list goes on. Did what? you have anything crappier than that? Like a, maybe a grass hill you would hop over? Oh yeah, you got those little neighborhood hits all over the place. Do you miss the days of urban assault? Did. Who doesn't? Like, come on. It's true. Let's get real. Riding, do riding street on a downhill bike? Why do you think it's not a thing anymore? What happened to the Urban Assault? It's kind of stupid. I filmed a video with you, Urban Assault video. Word play to give and doing damage. My words are picking to the canvas that you couldn't manage, you and took advantage. I've been the sickest on the planet, really what I'm saying is you ain't never seen it. They try to tell you he a genius and it. I mean, it's awesome, but if you do it every day, it just takes away from it. Like, these features don't change. <laughs> it's a bench. <laughs> <laughs> so, back in 2010, you were a competitor at Rampage, and I believe it was on your second run, you hit the Oakley sender, and you meant to do a no-hander, but you <laughs> only took one hand off. Yeah, that happened. Is that still eating you up inside? Because I remember. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Can you take us through that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I laid down a solid first run, and the only thing I could really do to improve was to do something off the Oakley Center. I tabled it first run, second run I figured I'd no-hand it. And uh, I honestly don't know what happened. I went off and I was like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> and I kid you not, Adrian Marcoux was shooting from under the ramp and uh, I went off and I was like, ah, oh, f***! <laughs> 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 he told me he heard it loud and clear. <laughs> you know, I have a similar story that Jason knows. I was riding uh, A-Line, and you know, we all know the jump under the chairlift. Of course. The very first jump. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to throw a no-hander, because you know, that's the jump where you gotta, you know, have a little show for the people up watching Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And I did the same thing. I was gonna throw the one-hander, but something just happened. Oh, God, no. <laughs> and I threw the one-hander. And I still think about it to this day. Here we are talking about it. And that was probably, I don't know, like eight years ago. And the difference was there was two people watching me, but you had all of national uh, television watching you, so. It was sick. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one-hander scene around the world. <laughs> what would be in the Jeff Gulovich starter pack? Ooh, probably, uh, we'd probably like cram a bike in there. Um, maybe a pocket knife, um, a GoPro, snacks. Need snacks. What kind yeah. of snacks? Um, I always have a couple of Cliff Bars in my bag. Uh, some Miss Vicky's salt and vinegar. Maybe throw a friend in there. <laughs> what? Can you bring me back? Can you remember one of your biggest oh shit moments while you were traveling? Just driving in India was so nuts. You're you're literally looking out for other vehicles. Nobody shoulder checks or anything there. Like the the rule of thumb is just don't hit me. Cool. <laughs> And then we would get out of the city where we're on mountain passes, probably around 12,000 feet. And it's like a 2,000, 3,000 foot exposed cliff. The road is maybe like a uh, North American lane in a wide half. And uh, there's no guardrail, no nothing. You can see the dirt has like started to fall away on the sides and everything. And everybody's still going 80 on the mountain passes. Doesn't matter if it's a highway or a mountain pass, you're going 80 and everybody takes the inside on blind turns. Just goes honk honk and then dives right in there. And you got oncoming traffic and someone just swerves out and somehow doesn't go off the cliff. Like we stopped to take a whiz at one corner and there's a tour bus 2,000 feet down. Like it's not uncommon for things just to go wrong there. We were white knuckled for about eight hours of that drive. 
Just driving in India is probably the scariest thing I've ever done. Like being a passenger. What was your first bike? My first bike was a Norco Kathmandu. I saved up for about a year doing my paper route to get it. And I picked it up and later that day it fell off my friend's mom's bike rack. On the road? Juiced, yeah. Ouch. Yeah. What was your first trick? I'm talking like a trick that you were stoked on. You're like, I can't believe I just learned that. I can't believe I can actually do that. Oh, well my first trick was a one-hander. I just took it to Rampage, you know. I had to make it look rat. So times have changed because you were once stoked on the one-hander, and now the one-hander humiliates you and haunts you in your dreams. That's not true. In that particular scenario, it does. However, when I can throw a good one-hander just to be like, hey, how are ya? And I'm all about it. Because why not? Can you tell us more about these photos? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually. Um, my friend started a uh, handbag company for women, and he asked me to model in it. And as you can tell, I'm the one person that doesn't belong there. <laughs> <laughs> look good. You do look good. You look good. I'd buy a bag. Yeah. Yeah. I already did. They went out of business. Sure. <laughs> can I explain this photo? Yeah, that's a great one. Um, so in India, the guides actually saw this photo. This is just a little truck stop that we stopped at. All the, the drivers we were with were, were just like, that's you. Like, that's you right here. And honestly, if you look close enough, it's really not that close, but I get it. Like, uh, all us white people look the same, so <laughs> there I am. <laughs> I can explain that one. <laughs> yeah, this is my driver's license. I, I think it's stupid how they make you renew it every five years and everything, and I decided to just fuck with them. <laughs> I didn't get my hair cut. I knew it was coming. I planned this like six months in advance. Uh, I didn't shower, I messed up my hair, and I went back in for the photo. <laughs> wow. A lot of force I put in that. Wow. Yeah. One more? One more. One more? Let's choose a good one here. Please explain this photo. Oh, so this is awesome. Not super awesome, but the photo is. Um, we're in China for um, that stupid race down the stairs, but after the event, we decided to ride down the legendary road of 99 curves and we made it down 97 of them. And at this point, I was riding Mitch Chubby's slow bike, slick tires, one brake, and the road's actually quite slippery. And we get down to the 97th corner, and Bernardo C Cruz uh, cuts the corner, and I see it coming, so I hit the brake, the, the wheel locks up, and I basically accelerate. And our my front wheel basically kissed his back wheel in the corner. And I was able to ditch the bike, step over the frame, and run out and just tuck and roll. But um, Ricky Crompton, who decided that he didn't know how to bunny hop that day, is coming down and I'll hear his, ah, and I look quickly and I see him coming and I just, I, I was on the ground, so I got my forearms down, I just covered my head like that. And he tries to hop, his back wheel just hits me in the back of the head and I went face down into the concrete and I broke my nose and laying there, everybody's freaking out, but nobody has any first aid. The only person with any first aid whatsoever was me. Would you like to play a game? Absolutely. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna play a game of uh, fill in the blank here. Uh, we got some phrases, expressions. All the blanks are at the end. Okay. We'll put 30 seconds on the clock. Tell All me right, me. are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Shred the... Nar. Long live... Free ride. Long live. Chainsaw. Ride or? Die. No dig, no. Ride. Norbs got? Robbed. Severed? D the fro? Riders. Ferda? Girls. Drop two. Drop two. North Shore. Drop two. Drop to what? Dork two. Drop the flat. Schlabel? Top. Send or be? Send. Mahalo. That's 30 seconds. No! One more to go. My dude was the last one. <laughs> the question did start. I, I don't think that's my fault. <laughs> you did great. You did really you good. It. That was awesome. Would you like to spin the wheel? Yeah. New to the wheel in our, we are letting the guest fill in one of our uh, small red spaces with their choice of trail. Have at it. I heard that the Longhorn is going to have a bowl on Friday. Can I put that in? Well, Longhorn's a trail, so we could yeah. go ride the Longhorn Trail, then to the Longhorn, so I don't see why not. Sure. 
if I just came to the bar in all my riding gear. <laughs> Come on, Bob. I think the price is right. Oh, oh. You got it. Oh, oh no. God, no. 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 God, no. <laughs> no, yeah, the gun's going. Fine. <laughs> All right, man. Let's go for a ride. Yeah, let's thanks do for it. ruining us. Uh, oh, my goodness. Am I rolling here? Yep. All right. Making my way downtown, Goat's Gully, shredding hard, and I'm so fast. thing of death. Skills. 